Hey, welcome back to the second video in the Motorcycle Scissor Table Lift series. This is video two. In video one, I showed you how excited I was to find this electric scissor jack at the dump. Uh, because that, on top of all the other stuff that I'd been amassing over the previous few weeks, has really been the icing on the cake to this um, table scissor lift build. Now that I've got all of the components and I've settled on which ones I'm going to use, I can begin the building. So over the last few days I've disassembled all the parts, I've been cutting up the framing, and I've got now to the stage where I need some help from you people. So stay watching and you'll be able to see what you can do to help me. Well, it's Sunday morning and I'm having a tidy up. I had all my toys out yesterday and finished most of the lift, which I'm gonna show you in a moment. The basic structure's done and I'm now into mounting the actuator, the uh, fancy electric scissor jack. But I've just discovered that I'm having the same problem as a lot of other people who make their own scissor jacks. Now, anybody who owns a pair of vice grips knows how this lever system works. They've got immense pressure at the jaw with a very light pressure on the handles. You can see this triangle here. When the triangle is wide and open like this, you don't have so much power. But as the triangle becomes a straight line, your power on the jaw is immense. Now that works conversely the opposite way. If I was trying to operate the handles by moving the jaw, I would have an incredible amount of effort to get it past that first point. But once it's moving, it's so easy. This is the problem I'm having with the jack. Come and have a look. What we've got here is the jack pushing this way. So it's pushing the frame up like that. Once it gets to about here, everything's really, really effortless. But this very first part, it just doesn't want to do it. So I'm, I'm faced with two options. One is either don't let the table collapse down so it gets to that point, so that you get past that initial push. But that means that the table will sit a little bit higher off the ground. The ramp will be a little bit steeper. I want to get this down as low as I possibly can. So before I start making mounts and mounting the jack here, I'm going to try another idea where I run the jack in the middle here on cross members across the two legs. And it pushes the two legs apart. So the same action's happening, but we just don't have this vice grip situation, which is the relative positioning between this, this, and this. It's like that. But once it gets to here, it opens very easily. Did that make sense? I hope it did, because I spent most of Saturday night standing around here with uh, a cup of coffee in my hand, just looking at the thing, trying to figure out the best way of doing it. If you follow this video, then you're pretty much guaranteed of having a motorcycle lift table that will work right first time. I'm providing you with all of the measurements and all of the clues so that you can do this on a really low budget that it's going to work first time and it's going to lift lightweight to medium sized motorcycles effortlessly and get you up off the concrete floor. I think building it from a trolley jack has been a really good idea because the thing that fails on a trolley jack more often than not is the ram. And in this project, we don't actually use the ram. It's the other bits that are so useful. Well, it's evening two, video two in the shed. I've made the uh, frame of the table and I've made the leg assembly. 
and it's and I'm now joining the two together with the pivot points. The wheels have to be assembled inside the perimeter frame of the top of the table, which is pretty hard because I want to do an enclosed channel because that will give so much more strength if it's an enclosed box. That just means a thin slot for the axle to run through, running this far down the side of the build. That means it's going to be very strong, but of course it gives me assembly problems. I only need to assemble it once. I don't know whether I'm going to do it with blue tack magnets on a stick or my fingertips, but somehow I've got to get these wheels assembled inside a slot in the side here because the axle will have to run through that slot. What I want to do is create a hole that the wheel can be slipped through and then I can hold it there with blue tack or a magnet or something and get the axle pin through it. I can't screw a nut and bolt an axle through because I can't assemble the thing with these wheels on it. Nor can I drop them down the end because this end has to be welded and capped off. And remember this is assembly time, right at the end when it's painted and everything. So if you've got any bright ideas on how I can do this, please quickly um, comment in the comments below. And I know it's going to be a little bit hard to articulate how you would do it, but I've been trying to think of different ways like uh, clevis pins, circlips, nylock nuts on the end of a thread but I don't want these wheels running on a thread because they're going to be carrying a lot of weight and I don't want them binding into a minimal surface area as it would be on the surface of a thread like that. I'd much rather have them running on the shoulder of bolt or a nice pin and of course that has to be assembled and welded firmly because it's incredible because it's got to be very strong and this is the only way I can think of how to do it so if you've got any bright ideas please comment below so here's the table top frame it's two meters tall well two meters long and 480 wide I've made it this narrow because dirt bikes by nature are narrow and that's what I'm mainly going to be working on and even if I'm working on something like a cruiser which is wide it really doesn't matter how, how, how far it hangs over the side of the table nothing on here that you need to be told about as yet except for I've put two captive nuts in here at the point where the tabletop will come down on top of the leg assembly as it nests when you pull it right down to the ground. The reason I've done that is so that I've got solid stops, so that it's not just floating around um, on its mechanism. When it comes down, it hits four points and comes to a firm stop for when you're rolling the bikes on. Don't want it wobbling and squirming while I'm um, bringing the bikes onto it. So I'll put this out of the way. And I'll just quickly show you what I've done so far. The clamp's only on here to hold it up like this so that I can work on this top end. But down here I've put in the greasable shackle pin bolts that I found at the dump. They were the perfect length to go through here. And right at the very bottom, I've welded in steel pins, I've welded inside and outside on both sides to make sure that these pins are as strong as they can be. And these pins were actually salvaged from the bottle jack itself. With the bottle jack wheels and greasable hubs inside. They haven't been greased yet because I want to paint everything first. I put a stiffener across the back of here because this is what I intended to push against with the scissor jack. But with that, I have a problem. Like I explained earlier about the um, vice grip lever points, 
the scissor jack has to give an immense push to get this thing started and then it gets easy. I don't think it's safe to rely on where I had it mounted originally so I'm going to put in some secondary mounting points and give it a direct lift from between the two halves of the scissors. That means that the mounting points have to pivot because it's changing its arc all the way through its range of extension. But don't forget, all of this is coming up in the build video after it's painted and greased and I've got a bike on it. I'll show you exactly how I built it and save you hours and hours of nothing out time. But as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll be working really hard to have something for you over the next couple of days. Thank you.